In a previous basics video I showed you how to use the digital output pins of an Arduino to create an analog signal. And many of you might already know that you can use the analog pins of an Arduino to do the reverse and thus convert an analog voltage into a 10-bit digital value. In this case the value 666 with the internal reference voltage of 4.62 volts equals the value 3.0048 volts close enough to the sample value of 3 volts. The part of the microcontroller which fulfills this function is called ADC, aka analog to digital converter. But what specifications are important for an ADC? How does it work and can we even build one by ourselves? Let's find out. Let's start with the first important specification by using a practical example. Here we have a sine wave with a frequency of 10 kHz and thus a cycle duration of 100 microseconds. Now you want to use your analog input to sample this function, but the problem is that your Arduino can only measure one analog value every 112 microseconds by default, so with a sampling rate of 9 kilo samples per second, which is the same as 9 kHz. That means we have roughly one sampling point per cycle duration of the sine wave. And if we want to recreate the function using those sampling points, we get complete bullshit. A solution for that offers the Nyquist Shannon theorem, which says that the sampling rate should be at least twice as high as the frequency of the signal. But even with this increased sample rate, the reconstructed signal would still look questionable in the best case. So a common rule of thumb is to use a sampling rate 10 times higher than the frequency of the signal, which as you can see, finally delivers a decent reconstructed signal. Now the Arduino can almost achieve such a high sampling rate by decreasing the prescalar value of the ADC down to 16. And as you might have already noticed, the first important specification is the sampling rate, which commonly can be as high as 200 kHz for a dedicated successive approximation ADC-IC, in this case the ADS-7816. This method of successive approximation is also used by the Arduino ADC, and it contains of a sample holds, a comparator, a DAC, aka a digital to analog converter, and a SAR, aka a successive approximation register. As an example, let's use an input voltage of 3 volts, a reference voltage of 5 volts, and a rather low resolution of only 4 bits. First off, the 3 volts is sampled and holds steady by a capacitor and a voltage follower, which then provides this voltage for the comparator. The SAR then sets the MSB or most significant bits of the 4 bits to 1 and sends the value to the DAC. Since the received 4 bits represent a decimal value of 8, which is the half of the overall bit quantity, the output voltage of the DAC is also the half of the reference voltage and thus 2.5 volts. As we all know, 3 volts is bigger than 2.5 volts and thus the output of the comparator becomes high and the SIR saves the 1 as the MSB. Then the SIR changes the next bit to 1, sends it to the DAC which once again creates a new voltage. This time though the DAC's voltage is bigger than the sampled voltage and thus the comparator sends a 0 to the SIR, which means it sets the previously changed bit to 0 and moves on to the next bit. This cycle repeats until all the 4 bits are processed and we get a result of 1001 or around 2.8 volts as a decimal value. Only problem is that there still exists a noticeable voltage difference to the sample value. The reason for that are the bits, or in other words the resolution. The second important specification. With 4 bits, we get voltage steps of 312.5 mV with a reference voltage of 5 volts. With the 10 bits of the Arduino, we get steps of 4.88 mV and with the 12 bits of the ADS7816, we even get steps of 1.22 mV. Obviously, by using a higher resolution, the reconstruction of your sample function will be a lot more precise. 
and if you want to use a dedicated 12-bit ADC IC like the ADS7816 with the Arduino, then it is actually pretty easy to pull off. Just print out the datasheet, mark the most important specifications and follow them, study the pinouts and while you are at it, add the missing connections to the Arduino and finally write an appropriate sketch according to the diamond diagram of the datasheet. And if you need inspiration from my created codes, then you can find it in the video description. After uploading the sketch to the board, the serial monitor presents the 12 bits of the analog value as well as the decimal value. This ADC though is obviously not self-built and not recommended to build since it requires a DAC. But another kind of ADC which is more appropriate for DIY is called a flash ADC. This 2-bit version basically consists of 4 comparators and 5 resistors which create a resistance network. With a reference voltage of 5 volts, we get different voltage values for each comparator. And thus by applying the input voltage of 3 volts, we get our different comparator outputs which then enter an encoder with a truth table to finally give us a 2-bit value in the end. This means flash ADCs are ridiculously fast but usually have a low resolution since they require 255 comparators for just an 8-bit resolution. And with that being said, you already know quite a lot about ADCs. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.